Welcome back to another episode of uh, Behind the Craft with Kiabdium. I am Keith Zen, and uh, we're going to call this one here Kiabdium Experiments. Uh, as many of you have probably seen, we're working on this Red Sonia project, Red Sonia build project, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you know, it's going to be leather, and it's metal, and it's uh, uh, other thermoplastics, and it's uh, sculpted in, you know, urethane pieces and that kind of thing. But the leather part, uh, today we're just going to kind of talk about deer skin. We've got this wonderful deer skin here. It smells great. And uh, the thing about deer skin, unlike a lot of leathers, is it is uh, basically a chromed tan leather versus a veg tan. So the process is different. It's going to absorb dye differently. Uh, and um, the biggest thing about it, too, is well, we don't know how it's going to react to color. And we need to match a bunch of it for the gloves. For the boot covers, things like that. Uh, but deer skin, in property-wise, it's it's a it's very thin, it's light, it's great for garments and gloves and things like that. Uh, it's stretchy, as you can see. There's a lot of stretch to it. So, in this experiment, we're going to use a few different products. Some people have recommended uh, Rit dye, and uh, Rit dye is just a basic type of fabric dye. Put in warm water, uh, drop it in the dye, take it out. I have a feeling, though, from what I've read, that the Leather is going to get kind of hard, and it's going to take some um, you know, different types of oils or conditioners to get it back to a soft state. So this should be interesting. The other one we're going to use is by Tandy Leather, and I don't know if you can see that, but it's uh, Tandy's EcoFlow series. Uh, this is their actual their antique dye uh, because we wanted there to be a little more of a kind of a worn and used look. And this is their medium brown, which is essentially what the uh, Rit Cocoa, yeah, Cocoa Brown, similar as I think. Finally, uh, and, and by this one we're going to be using a, a sponge to apply the dye. Uh, and finally, we have Angelus's uh, leather dye, and this is also in a medium brown. Now with the Angelus, they recommend you can paint it or uh, brush it on. Or even sponge it on but they recommend actually using an airbrush so this is what the experiments are going to be and we'll see how this goes all right and we're back we're about ready to start with this uh, first experiment we're going to be using again the tandy ecoflow antique finish shake that up a little bit shake 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 uh also um i like to use let's see if you can see it ah, there we go um Renewal wedges, these are basically just cosmetic sponges. Uh, you can get them almost anywhere. Rite Aid, CBS, All Greens. Um, they work pretty well uh, because, now these aren't the round ones, these are the little kind of triangular ones. They work pretty well because uh, they absorb dye well, uh, they don't leave a lot of streaks, and um, well, you can just, just kind of dab and pat and dab and pat, works pretty great. Okay, so we're back here. Hopefully uh, you can see this leather here and like I mentioned before I've got the EcoFlex So we're gonna go ahead and Put a little bit of this on the EcoFlex. If you hear any other noises That is just Abby also working on stuff. She is so just passed through Hi. So I'm just gonna dab it on here. Um, they recommend that you Put it in in a circular motion and you kind of dab it onto your product in this case on the leather and we're gonna kind of put it on until we start getting the color that we want and that's the idea so as you can see just kind of putting it on in that circular motion and what it's gonna do is it's eventually gonna start to darken up as we apply more layers so we're going to keep doing this, we're going to add a little bit more. I realize that if this is the color we go with, we're going to need a lot more of them. Good to know. Alright. So, we're just dabbing away here. You can already see that it's already starting to get darker. Uh, also, if you put it onto the other, more sweaty side, it immediately gets dark, so uh, food for thought, but we're not using that other side, so it's not going to matter too much. And a 
That's pretty good, actually. Not a bad color. So we're going to kind of just let that sit like that for a moment and see how that absorbs. And as you can see, it's picking up a lot of the grain of the leather, which is exactly what we want. Um, and it's not a bad color. So we're going to compare that with the statue in a bit. But I'm going to let this dry and then we'll uh, take a look at the other product and see how that one works. Okay, so um, we're back here again and uh, the dye process is in the middle of what it's doing. Unfortunately, I can't really film that because I don't have the right equipment and uh, I need more tripods and stuff. So you'll just have to take my word that it's being done. Um, so we're going to work on, uh, uh, as you saw, we already kind of did the dye with the Ecoflex from Tandy. And now we're going to tinker with uh, the Angelus medium brown. Uh, again, we have our deer skin that we're going to work with. Um, I am using a Pache, I think that's how you say it, Pache airbrush. Uh, this was recommended by my good friend uh, Shelby Michael, who's a makeup artist. And uh, what's kind of cool about this one is it's got uh, some, you can remove the, the cup uh, and put in a larger uh, bottom feed. There's a little top feed, gravity feed cup, uh, which is kind of neat. And uh, I think they make a couple different sizes of those. Uh, it is only a, uh, a single action airbrush. So I think for this purpose, it'll be good. And you have the ability to kind of open it up and get solid air and, and uh, paint coming out of it. So that's what we're gonna use to apply the uh, Angelus. Okay, we are back and uh, got everything set up. I'm airbrush set up, uh, got my, my leather dye ready to go. And uh, for those of you who have worked with airbrushes before, you know that you want your paint consistency to be essentially like, um, well, basically like milk. Uh, so if you were to put it into a cup and stir it with a, um, a little uh, uh, tongue depressor, when you take the liquid out, and you, or the, in this case the paint, it should coat the tongue depressor presser and uh, leave, you know leave a little layer and then drip right back into the cup if it's too thick it's not gonna spray out if it's uh, too thin it's gonna not cover very well so we're gonna try this this one looks pretty good as is so let's see what we get on this little paper towel do a little testing here there we go and it's kind of got a orangey look to it so we'll see how that covers all right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and apply. And just do it like that. Sorry for the sound of the compressor. I think I'm gonna hold this so it's gonna be a little bit easier to control. The thing with Angelus paint is you can build it up and uh, so you can get a darker effect the more layers you put on. As you can see, it's already taken a nice darker look, remembering what our original color was, which is this kind of this yellow orange. And uh, I'll continue to throw some more paint on that. kind of come along. All right, we're going to kind of let that sit. I'm going to test it in a moment to see how wet it is. 
All right, and we'll stop with that guy. And uh, then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut another piece of this and we're gonna break out the dark brown and we'll experiment with that color. This time we've got uh, the Angelus dark brown. Um, I, I'm sure anyone who's done any kind of painting has, uh, especially airbrush painting, has seen these little droppers. Um, these are great, you can get these up on like Amazon or at your local hobby store. Just simple, you know, get a little small amount of paint, makes it easy to pour, makes it easy to control uh, how much paint you wanna use. Uh, in this case, um, I'm getting a little bit here, put it into my cup, and that should be good for starters anyway. Alright, then we'll get some leather, and uh, let's use this other piece here. And we'll go ahead and give it a shot. Let's make sure this is all coming out. Now, I did not clean my airbrush prior to swapping colors. So I'm gonna run this through uh, until I start seeing the darker color out, uh, come out. There we go. You can see the darker color coming out right now. So this way, I'm ensured that the new color is in there. When it comes to like browns and stuff like that, it's not a huge issue um, to clean out your brush and cup. So that's basically what I did just for speed purposes. So we're gonna throw some of the dark brown on here now. Now, one of the things I should mention about An Angelus, uh, some of you guys have probably heard of them. Uh, they do essentially leather paint uh, is what they're known for. And it's amazing, amazing stuff. Um, I've used everything from, uh, you know, the leather paints that you can get at your local hardware store. Uh, what is the other stuff called? Uh, uh, New Life. Um, and they work okay, but they tend to come out shiny. And eventually they do tend to crack and they do tend to flake out and they also tend to dry out the leather. The wonderful thing about Angelus is it does none of that. Uh, it will crack, uh, not crack, but it will um, bend and wrinkle in the places that it should as the leather wears. So in that respect, it's pretty amazing. They also have a number of um, additives that you could use. So you can either paint the Angelus on using a brush or a sponge but you can also use a, well, they have a thinning agent. You can thin it down and you can run it through your airbrush, which is actually really good for getting even coats. You can build your layers up uh, much better than you could use it, utilizing a brush or a sponge. And you can also add in different, uh, they have a duller, for example. So you can add in a, a, a duller or a flat uh, agent to the paint so it flattens it out right away. Uh, and this way you get a more matte finish, uh, which is actually really nice because some things don't require shiny. And then they also have, I think, three different uh, kind of clear coats that you can use and from a gloss to a semi-gloss and then a matte. Uh, so uh, all of those are pretty cool. Uh, but this is their dye, and their dye, uh, unlike their paint, is actually going to pigment the leather. The, the paint that they make actually can scratch off. So... And what I mean by scratch off is if you were to drag your uh, leather belt or shoe or something against the hard surface, like cement, uh, you can scratch it and the paint can come off and it'll show the under layer. Uh, but that's pretty uh, dramatic, um, but it's easy to fix. Whereas the dye actually is just gonna literally do what it says it's gonna do. It is gonna change the color of the leather permanently. With that, I will be back in a moment. Okay, we are uh, we're back and uh, continuing this. Got a little sidetracked, but good return. So I'm going to continue with the dark brown. Although it's only four.
Ooh, that, <laughs> that's a little more than we want. Let's do a little less. Yeah, that'll work. All right. Just kind of fast the coverage because I'm lazy. It's of course going to saturate the leather a little faster, but all right. I'm going to let that dry accordingly. Let that sit over there. Okay, and then while we're doing that, as long as we got it all up and running, I'm going to go ahead and bring back, if you remember, we had this piece here uh, that we had used. Uh, remember, kids, put your caps on your stuff in between, otherwise you might knock something over and that would be bad. So we're going to put a little more of that on. Yeah. This is the Ecoflex from Tandy again. Uh, get a little bit of that on there and we're going to apply that back to this other piece because we're going to dark in it up a little bit and I just realized that I should put on my other glove because well let's face it nobody wants brown fingers gives you a weird uh people give you weird looks at work on Mondays about that all right but we're just going to darken that up a little bit more. And that'll be good with that. A little more of that. I kind of feel like Bob Ross right now. I'm going to paint a little tiny tree. Little, little tree. Little tree. And, uh, Back it off a little bit, and it'll give us our basic, basic look. And like I said, we got this great stuff here. I am really liking um, the Ecoflex Antique. It has a lot of depth to it, and it gives it very nice overall feel. Like I said, the uh, the Antique gets into the the grain of the leather. So it gives it a little bit more life, I think. Um, I will say that the browns are very, very different from each other. So this is their uh, medium brown, like I said. Um, so let's kind of pop that guy back over there. And we're going to let, let you dry some more. And so far, um, this is a lightly coated medium brown. Uh, remember, the original color of the deer skin is actually this yellow orangey color um, so we're trying to turn it into more of a brown brown uh, so that's a little reddish little brick colored not sure about that this is this is the uh, darker brown um, I'm gonna try this in a little different fashion I'm gonna use this dark brown again only I'm gonna um, spray it from a little further away and See if we can give it a lighter coat. So we don't get so much color right out of the gate. Alright, we got that. And that's not bad either. Add a little more of this. At the moment I feel like I should be wearing a respirator because <coughs> paint is pouring out. I might just do that. Back this guy up a little bit more. through all that paint. That was quick. Yeah. Come on, paint.
too much. Back to where we were. So by going in this uh, back in up a little bit, we can control how dark of a brown we got it. As you can see, this one has way too much dye thrown on it. Um, so I think that uh, that's not half bad. And of course, we've got this one, which we can control. There, I've got a bunch of dye paint on me. That's good. I guess I'm spilling. Nice. Um, so, yeah. All right. Well, when I come back, I'm going to pull out the uh, other ones that we dyed, and we'll take a good look at them all. Okay, so um, we're back, and uh, most of this test is uh, basically concluded with a few things. Uh, so, as I mentioned, we need to change colors of the stuff. So I'm going to show you here. So this, this is, rah, this is the head, uh, but this is the Red Sonia glove, and as you can see in this lighting. Now, of course, the lighting is going to change everything. This is the same color that we're using for the uh, the boots and it's the general color that they run throughout and if you notice there's some dark shading running through here um, so overall pretty cool so that's what we got to match and here is the deer skin so clearly not a good choice all right so as we uh experimented here we uh, went from the basic rit dye and with the rit dye uh this is the medium and I didn't leave it in there. Wait, is that it? Yeah. Nope. Nope. I lied. Sorry. This is the medium. Didn't leave it in there for uh, too long. I mean, just long enough to get some color on it, uh, which is what you kind of want with leather, I think. Uh, it's not fully dry, so I have a feeling this is going to lighten up just a little bit. But it's um, really red, so I don't think that's going to really work. And we haven't determined how dry this is going to like the, like if it's going to get hard when we're done. All right. Move that out of my face. It doesn't look like I have a, a booger or something. Anyway, all right. So we got that. Um, so I switched to the dark brown writ, and um, that is a much, much, much better choice. In fact, it's really, really close. I think we could be pretty happy with that. What do you think? I think that's pretty good. There, I'm putting that in my nose again. All right, um, and uh, it's pretty good. Once again, it's still wet, so it's gonna it's gonna definitely uh, change a bit. It's probably gonna lighten up, but this is my mask. Um, but I think that's pretty cool, and you can see a lot of the grain that's going on there and whatnot. So that could work, but we'll find out. This still needs to dry. The other test uh, we experimented with uh, the Angelus, and we used the Angelus uh, medium brown. And we use that with an airbrush and uh, essentially this is a, a few layers of this and keep in mind again this is the original color so I could have gotten that much darker at the bottom you see it's kind of gradient from the top to the bottom but it's very red it's uh, not really gonna cut the color that we want so that's no good medium brown not gonna happen so I switched over and um, Pulled up. This is their dark brown, and this has actually been sprayed pretty heavily on. As you can see, dramatic color difference. Uh, it is dry right out of the gate. So that's one thing cool about airbrush. It dries real quick. It is maintaining all of its stretch properties. Um, if I rub it on a white cloth, there's no bleed over. So that's kind of cool. Not too much light there going, um, but that's pretty good. And uh, but match wise. Let's take a look at where we're at. So, to me, I think that's dark and a little too brown. So we're going to kick that guy out. Now, using the same stuff, but applying it a little bit lighter, we get this. 
and uh, still very reddish, dark, not really in the ballpark. I like the product. It works well. It feels good, but um, the leather's still supple, but overall, it's not really doing what we want. So what does that leave us with? Well, like I said, we, we talked about the, the RIT coloring, and that's pretty cool. But you know what I really like? I really like the EcoFlow from Tandy. Uh, this is their uh, antique medium brown. I believe that's what this is. Let's just double check. Yep, medium brown antique. And check this out. If there's not a closer match, I don't know what it would be. That is pretty amazing. I, I think it's going to be perfect. But the other thing you'll notice is notice how there's a lot of dark areas because it's picking up the flaws in the leather. So it's giving you this really nice, rich, um, wonderful coloring overall. Very nice. Leather is still very supple. And I think it's going to be perfect. So, um, and once again, it does not wipe off either. So, um, I think we have a winner. And I, I'm surprised with the EcoFlow. I was told that we might have to put some conditioner on it. And we still may later. But um, well, I think I think we got it. I think that's what we're going to go with. So I just want to thank you guys for um, sitting in on this. Uh, hopefully this video will get it edited. It's going to be much smaller. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, thanks for this. Joining us in our experimentation on uh, deer skin and the three different products. Once again, we used Rip Dye. Uh, we used... Angelus's uh, leather dye rather than their paint in both medium brown and brown. Uh, great results, just not the color we wanted. And finally, uh, Tandy's um, Antique Eco Flow is the winner. And that's going to be the one we're going to use for uh, all this deer skin. I think we need to buy a lot more of this.